Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So um, welcome welcome back to the immunology lectures and uh, we will start discussing so we started discussing about the complement activation pathways in our last lecture and we will continue uh, discussing about the complement pathway and try to understand what exactly are the biological consequences so what does this uh, complement system actually do or what are the functions that they perform. So, what we have learned what we see on the board right now is the complement activation pathway. So, how the whole cascade of complement uh, starts to work or all, all the complement proteins they starts to activate each other and the cascade starts working. So, that was the whole idea. So, what we found in this entire um, uh, in, in the complement activation pathways or what I described in the last class as well uh, that once there is antigen. So, there are three major pathways there is a classical pathway, the alternative pathway and the lectin pathway and the classical pathway starts with antibody antigen binding. Alternative pathway starts only when there is C 3 B present only in presence of C 3 B the broken product of the C 3 and the lectin pathway is primarily it is also an antigen independent pathway it is not an antigen dependent pathway. So, the lectin pathway also starts with the interaction of certain lectin uh, molecules specialized lectins like mannose binding lectin or phycolin with the carbohydrate moieties on the surface of the pathogen and all remember all these reactions most of these reactions in the or the complement activation pathways they occur on the surface of the pathogen it is all only on the pathogen surface and they are all all of them if you see they converge at this point of formation of C 3 convertase. So, at least three different sources of C 3 convertase we have seen in the last class the formation of 4 B 2 A 4 B 2 A both from the classical and the lectin pathways. So, the classical and the lectin pathways are pretty much uh, similar in that way or their activities are pretty much similar in that way one is just uh, antibody dependent another is antibody independent pathway and then we have the alternative pathway also where we get C 3 B B B. So, breaking down of another factor B uh, and uh, formation of 3 B B B. So, it is 4 B 2 A 4 B 2 A and 3 B B B these are the three different C 3 convertases and the main idea is the central idea is to amplify the signal and the signal amplification occurs at the level of C 3 B formation. So, C 3 B is the main molecule that is required in all the effector paths. So, C 3 is broken down by the C 3 convertases that are being formed after so much of effort from all these complement proteins they give so much effort to do one central job that is to break down the C 3. Now, they have broken down the C 3 into C 3 A and C 3 B. Once C 3 B is available this C 3 B can perform its function in two ways one is directly another is again in association with other complement proteins and what is that that is in presence of 4 B 2 A it can associate with the 4 B 2 A that is one of the C 3 convertase and produce another convertase which is known as the C 4 B 2 A 3 B and it is a C 5 convertase. So, which means it converts C 5 to 5 A and 5 B. So, these are the two cleavage products of C 5 
Similarly, this C3B in association with another protein called properidin can also associate with the C3 convertase derived from the alternative pathway which is the C3BBB and finally, it forms another C5 convertase which is the C3BBB and C3B. So, basically this contains three different cleavage products, three different broken cleavage products which together they form a bigger complex. And this most of these complexes they are membrane anchored complexes. So, they are anchored to the membrane of the target cell usually the pathogen and this is the C5 convertase. So, these both of these are C5 convertases and they can as the name suggests they can convert C5 into 5A and 5B. Now, comes the main point. So, now we have come to a situation where we have a lot of C3B and we have C5B. We also have C3A and we also have C5A. So, now how all these broken products or the cleavage products of the complement system, they finally mediate the action or what do they do? So, for that we need to understand the biological consequences or the functions that all these complement proteins or the cleavage products of the complement proteins they do. So, after the activation of the complements so complement activation that is what we learnt in our last class this occurs and this leads to at least three different consequences. So, one of the major consequences that we know or we have told or discussed about is formation of the membrane attack complex or we also call it the MAC. Now, how is this MAC formed and what does it do? We have to understand what is this MAC is actually and what it does to the target cell. A second thing is opsonization and a third thing is enhances, enhances inflammation. So, these are the three major functions that the complement proteins perform. Among these this opsonization is an antibody driven process, membrane attack complex it is primarily driven by other complement proteins and what are the complement proteins that are involved? The major complement proteins that are involved in this are C 5 B, C 6, C 7, C 8 and C 9. So, now what does this membrane attack complex do and how is this formed? C 5 as I as we discussed in the uh, from the last uh, slide or in the last class that C 3 is broken down to 3 A and 3 B and this 3 B is the magic molecule. So, this 3 B is the central molecule. This 3 B can form 5 C 5 convertase and it can function independently as well. So, that is it can have direct action on the cells. So, this is one of the functions by which it has produced the C 5 B now and this C 5 B which is produced on the surface of the cell it is a cleavage product of the C 5 it has formed C 5 A and C 5 B. So, once this A are produced we take this A here. So, C 3 A and C 5 A we put them here because they are the major mediators of inflammation. We will discuss about how they do the inflammation or mediate the inflammation later on, but for the time being let us look into this 
membrane attack complex. So, what happens is the C 5 B when it, the cleavage product is formed this 5 B is a very labile product it is not very stable and it cannot uh, survive like that otherwise it will be degraded. So, it cannot survive like that for more than 2 minutes. So, then it has to be protected or it has to be stabilized and who does that? So, it is being done by the C 6. So, C 5 which is broken into C 5 A and C 5 B and this C 5 B then associates with C 6 and forms what we call is C 5 B 6. Now, this is a rather stable complex because C 5 itself gets degraded very fast. So, this cannot survive more than 2 minutes and now it forms this C 5 B 6 complex. Now, as soon as this 5 B 6 complex is formed immediately the C 7 comes in and it binds to this C 5 B 6 and forms the C 5 B 6 7 complex and this C 5 B 6 7 complex is kind of already competent enough to lyse a cell or go into a cell into the cell membrane. Why? Because as soon as this C 5 B 6 complex is formed and it binds to the C 7 uh, unit then there is a structural transition. So, there is a structural transition a conformational change what we call normally in, um, uh, in terms of structure. So, there is a quick conformational change and this conformational change actually exposes the hydrophobic patches or the hydrophobic residues on the C 7 on the surface. Now, that leads to imparts more hydrophobicity on the surface and leading to its as this assembly of 5 B 6 uh, 5 B 6 7 to get inserted into the hydrophobic cell membranes. You know because the cell membranes are usually they have a hydrophobic environment because of this lipid bilayers. So, this kind of lipid bilayer is usually present in the membrane and something that has to go inside this, this lipid bilayer has to be hydrophobic. Any hydrophilic things cannot go in. They have the this, this, these lipids they have a polar head and a non-polar tail and this non-polar tail or this hydrophobic tail does not accommodate anything or any charged molecules. So, anything that is hydrophobic that will very nicely accommodate here. So, similarly this this kind of a complex can very easily go inside. Now, sometimes this uh, as, as I was telling you that uh, most of the time this uh, complement activation process and the assembly of these complement proteins they take place on the surface of the cell. But sometimes they are also taking place not only on the surfaces, but also in isolated complexes. And if so happens, then sometimes these isolated complexes which can move around actually, they can go and create the same damage to a cell which is not the target cell, but it is nearby the target cell. And that can happen when this C 5 B 6 7 is already formed. And once this C 5 B 6 7 is already formed, it can go and get inserted into the membrane of a nearby cell which is not the target cell. And this phenomenon is sometimes described as innocent bystander lysis. So, innocent bystander means the one that is standing by that is standing next to it, it is innocent, but it is just gets affected. So, it is uh, it's just uh, 
uh, faulty uh, thing or a mistake of the system that can happen sometime that it can kill an innocent cell instead of the target cell. This can also happen and this phenomenon is known as the innocent bystander lysis. This can usually happen uh, starting from this uh, 5B67 which is competent enough to go into the uh, cell membrane and can cause the lysis of the cell. So, now the next step is once this 5P67 is formed then the next complement protein the C8 immediately binds 5P678 complex is formed and again this complex undergoes a similar conformational change so the C8 and which is the outermost part. So, they come one one after the other and they form a tubular structure like this and the C8 which is now the outermost one it can also undergo a structural transition and then what it happens is it allows binding of C9. Now, the C9 usually binds in huge number it is not a single C9. So, it can bind like 10 to 15 C9 molecules can bind together and form something what, <coughs> what would look like something like this. And a hollow cylindrical structure like this will be formed. Now, this structure can go into the cell membrane and that would lead to a damage of the cell membrane. So, there will be a hole or a pore formation on the cell membrane leading to inrushing fluids leading to uh, on disturbance uh, in the uh, in the tonicity. So, the cells will basically there will be inrushing fluids and the cells will swell and the cells will finally die. So, they will burst and die. So, what is formed here is C 5 B 6 7 8 9 and this is nothing but the membrane attack complex. So, this membrane attack complex this usually has approximately the size ranges in the range of 70 to 100 angstrom. The size is approximately in the range of 70 to 100 angstrom and it looks like a cylindrical, cylindrical structure and this cylindrical structure gets inserted on the membrane of the cell and forms a channel or a pore and allows the entry of the fluids and leading to bursting of the cell or and finally leading to killing of the cells. So, this is one of the way that uh, the cells uh, that the complement system actually can destroy the cells directly. So, after the activation pathway the final product that is formed is the C 5 B associates with the C 6 and that in turn associates with 7, 8 and 9 and finally, it forms the C 5 B 6 7 8 9 complex and this 5 B 6 7 8 9 complex is known as the membrane attack complex and this membrane attack complex as the name suggests it attacks the membrane, it goes and gets inserted into the membrane and leads to killing of the cell. But usually these events they do not happen to our normal cells they usually happen to the target cells. So, the, uh, the system is very well designed to recognize the target cell only. Sometimes as I told it can so happen that these complexes are uh, formed not formed on the cell or the target cell and can lead to what we know what is known as the innocent bystander lysis. So, lies the cell that is standing next to it. So, this can also happen sometime, but usually does not happen and why it does not happen we will discuss in our next classes. So, 
Let us look into the other process by which complement activation actually uh, shows its, its effects or its biological consequence that is by opsonization. So, again C 3 B we will come across this C 3 B molecule several times because the C 3 B is the is the central and the wonder molecule. Now, how does this C 3 B look like? So, this C 3 B usually there is an internal thioester linkage by which it can actually have or get an attachment to the cell or the target cell. So, this is how the C 3 B looks like and this is the 3 B, the 3 B and this is C 3 A. So, this, this portion is the C 3 A and this is the soluble part and this C 3 A goes here. So, this is the soluble C 3 A and this remains bound to the membrane. How? So, consider this as the membrane. So, it reacts with this free hydroxyl or the amine groups and it can uh, remain bound like this and this is how the C 3 B can get bound to the surface of the target cell if this is the target cell for example, if this is the surface of the target cell. So, and that is how it can even coat the cell surface. So, for example, if there is a pathogen if this is the pathogen for example, a bacteria it can get coated by the C 3 B molecules directly by this by this interaction. And then of course, there are antibodies which are produced, there are antibodies that are produced and they can also bind to the target cell. Now, this target cell or the target pathogen is then recognized by the phagocytic cells. So, the phagocytic cells or the phagocytes, so let us call this the phagocyte, these phagocytic cells they can recognize this by specialized receptors like the complement receptors, the CR1 for example. They can recognize by these complement receptors as well as there are these FC receptors which can bind to the FC region of the antibodies. So, when there is these two reactions occurring together, so when there is an antibody binding to the surface of the target cell as well as C 3 B molecule which is also known as an opsonin because of its opsonization function it is also known as an opsonin. So, it is primarily known as the opsonin. So, this kind of C 3 B molecules they coat the surface of the pathogen they coat the surface of this pathogen and as well as the antibodies which are formed these antibodies they also coat the surface of the pathogen. So, when these two interactions are complete that leads to internalization or phagocytosis. So, this makes phagocytosis complete. So, that would lead to finally, internalization and phagocytosis. So, that is how the C 3 B actually the C 3 B molecule mediates opsonization. So, the C 3 B molecule usually the C 3 the entire C 3 it can remain bound to the surface of the cell and when 
there is a cleavage of this C 3 by uh, C 3 convertase for example, that would lead to C 3 A and C 3 B. The C 3 A is usually the soluble part and the C 3 B is the insoluble part because it remains bound to the membrane. So, now this C 3 B can other than uh, leading to uh, formation of uh, C 5 B and uh, membrane attack complex and all these things, the C 3 B can directly coat a pathogen surface, it can go and bind to the surface of the pathogen by this kind of a linkage shown here. So, it can go and bind to the pathogen surface and as well as the pathogen or the bacterium, it can get coated by the antibodies and together they can bind to the receptors on the surface of the phagocytes. So, the CR1 the complement receptor or the FC receptors and these FC receptors can bind to the FC region of the antibodies. So, when these two types of bindings are complete then this phagocytosis can occur and this cell is then internalized and killed. A third process that the complement proteins initiates or the cleavage product of this complement proteins initiates is enhancing inflammation. So, they can bind to receptors that are expressed by this type of cells specialized cells which contains these granules or the granulocytes and binding of these receptors uh, binding of this uh, complement cleavage products can lead to degranulation. We will study more about degranulation in our next classes. So, that leads to degranulation and releasing primarily histamine and other mediators of inflammation like for example, prostaglandins. So, this process is known as the degranulation and this is primarily mediated by the soluble cleavage products or the smaller cleavage products like the C 3 A and C 5 A. It can also lead to if you remember one of our very initial classes where we uh, studied about the inflammation or the inflammatory responses and we have described about the extravasation of the neutrophils for example. So, the neutrophils the extravasation of neutrophils that also or migration of the neutrophils that can also be mediated by the cleavage products of the complement cleavage products or the soluble cleavage products like C 3 A and 5 A. So, this can also act as chemo attractants and this can also enhance inflammation. So, they can bring more and more of these uh, neutrophils, more and more of these phagocytes, the monocytes, they can come to the site of action. So, that leads to enhanced inflammation. So, they can either lead to degranulation and uh, release of the histamine and other uh, mediators of inflammation like prostaglandins or they can also assist in migration of the leukocytes migration of primarily the neutrophils to the site of action and by that they can lead to enhancement of inflammation. So, what we learnt in this lecture today is that the complement system mediates its action. Uh, what we learnt in our last lecture is how the complement system gets activated, what are the major activation pathways, how they cleave each other and gets activated and wh what we learnt today in this lecture is that how these activated complement proteins or the after activation how cleavage of these proteins can lead to finally, what are the biological con consequences of this activation of the complement pathway and they can kill or destroy the target cells. So, one of the ways it does is by formation of the membrane attack complex the MAC, a second way it does is by opsonization along with 
the antibodies it helps the antibodies as well so along with the antibodies it helps in engulfment of the pathogen or phagocytosis of the pathogen and the third is it can enhance inflammation so these are the three major uh, ways that the complement proteins actually performs their function now the question is so if this complement proteins can do so many things so many harmful things why don't they do it to our self cells to our own cells it targets the pathogen it only uh, creates membrane attack complex on the pathogen it only opsonizes the pathogen or coats the pathogen surface so why or how this uh, when there is no infection in the body the complement proteins are still there the complement proteins are still moving around so why does these proteins even though they are moving around in the body they do not really attack the cells of our body or uh, they do not really do anything uh, 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 any inflammation or anything so why why this is um, happening why the complement proteins do not uh, perform these functions normally or do not get activated normally so of course there is a reason and the reason is that there is a very 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 tight regulation there is a very tight regulation and there is another class of proteins which are known as the regulators the regulators of complement activation the rca so this class of protein the regulators of complement activation this class of protein they do not allow the complements to even if there is a cleavage even if there is a breakage and formation of c3b availability of c4b even then there are regulators which will not allow the complement to perform all these functions or the complement system to perform all these functions and they are known as the rcas or the regulators of complement activation we will discuss about the rcas and the complement complex regulatory processes in our next next lecture so that's all for uh, this lecture and thank you very much